Hello, can you hear me? Hello?
itu pak itu pak itu itu pak ah selesai ya pak bismillah Okay, uh, welcome back to the second sessions of our international seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would like to first thank to the first speaker of the first session seminar. We would like to thank to Dr. Hadi, Dr. Charmin Brony, and also Dr. Kanawan, and also our moderator, Dr. Arif Saptaji, for guiding the first session. We are going to continue with the second session. In this session, we will have the topic current issues in the context of COVID-19. And the presentation will be performed by Dr. Susewa Wichaiko, the Deputy Director of Students Affairs BCNNP PBRI Thailand. And the second speaker will be Dr. Karen K. Majas from University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. And also, Astin Nurwanti, PhD, our Dean of Faculty of Health Sciences, Alma Ata University. And I would like to check if the moderator for the second session is Ms. Sinta or Ms. Sapta Aji first. Okay, uh, let me check if I can hear uh, Dr. Susiwa with high school sounds. Dr. Susiwa, do you hear me? Hello. Hello, Dr. Susiwa, do you hear me? Dr. Susiwa. Dr. Susiwa, do you hear me? Yes, it seems that she hear me, she, she hear my voice. So we are going to get ready with the second session and the first speaker will be Dr. Sushiwa. And to guide the second session, I would like to invite again our moderator, Mr. Aji to lead the second session. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Sapta Aji. Thank you. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, welcome back, Dr. Sabtaji, please. 
Okay, thank you for uh, introducing me again, Mr. Cahya Kusuma. So, for all participants, we are moving to the second session of this international webinar from the Faculty of Health Science, University of Alma Arta. Here, um, from the part one of this webinar, we got some updates about the COVID-19 in Indonesia, New York, and Thailand. Then, what should we do during this COVID-19 in, in this uh, pandemic in this time? So, here in part two of this international webinar series, our speakers will give us some insight on the current trends and issues, including remote learning, homesteading, and urban gardening and nutrition support in the time of COVID-19 pandemics. So ladies and gentlemen, in this part two, we are going to have three fabulous expert speakers. There are Dr. Susiwa Wichai Kul. Hello, Dr. Susiwa, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay, perfect, cool. Second speaker is Karen K. Mejos. She's also my friend. Hello, Karen. Can you Karen. hear my voice? Oh, and the third speaker is Esti Nurwanti. Uh, before I introduce them one by one, I let know the regulation, how the presentation before I introduce them. Firstly, I would like to give the time to all the speakers to present the material for about 20 minutes and 10 minutes for Q&A. So for you participant, if you have any question, please write down in the chat rooms and with the format of uh, your name, your uh, underscore your institutions, underscore your country, uh, underscore your questions. And if you have some questions regarding this topic don't hesitate to ask the questions Wait. to us and if now you know. allow me to welcome the first excellent speaker dr susiwa wichaikul she is a gpg director <laughs> of student <laughs> affairs <laughs> tbri um, ministry of public health thailand she has many publications and <laughs> other experiences um, she is going to give her talk about yeah, the yeah. tele-education and application trends in the healthcare education during the COVID-19. So he is, uh, she is a lecturer in the nursing informatics at uh, yeah, and PVC Thailand, PBRI, and also lecturer of pediatric subjects. So please welcome Dr. Susiwa Wichaikul. Uh, this time is yours, and you can share your screens so we can see your slides for point presentation and good luck have you seen my screen hello hello yeah Hello, have you seen my screen? I still haven't seen your screens, Dr. Susiwa. Um, I'm sure already, but I'm not sure that. Okay, All maybe right. because the, you know, the delaying of the connection of internet. So yeah, you can continue your presentations. Because I think so the problem is we connect more than four hours. So I think maybe this is a problem. If I share your no. my slide with you and you can Problem can you um share or uh, your screen from your um, desktop okay okay yeah we have your presentation as well so the committee from almata university can help you to solve your presentations for points okay no problem so,
I also share my slide with um maybe uh her window as well. Maybe she can share. Or maybe you can point the pin, point the pin in my name. Oh. You see the pin? Because I, I see many people share the screen. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Okay, uh, Dr. Sushiwa, can you hear my voice? Yes. Uh, can you wait for a second? We are having a technical problem here. Um, I will try to contact the supporting team first. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone, can you see that I share your uh, our screens that uh, contain the Dr. Sushiwa slide presentations? Dr. Sushiwa, can you see the screens? Um. Is it coming up in your computer or not? I can see because my computer. Okay. But I haven't okay, seen perfect. In the, the six. Do you now you upload now? Yep. Okay, perfect. So you can just say next or yeah to the next slide and we will help you to manage it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So um Salamat Bakis. Sawadika and um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sushiwa from Museum of Parat Bashira, Praparom Rajnok Institute, Thailand. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you for asking me to share my experiences about tele-education and application which I employed it during COVID-19 outbreak in Thailand. As we know, um, this is time for the social distancing to stop um, COVID-19 widespread spreading. So a variety of digital technology will be um, useful to communicate between social restrictions. Next, please. And this time for changing um, if you don't like to use technologies, and this one is appropriate terms, we can say that we use the crisis to be the chance to improve your digital literacy as well. Next, please. So in my talk, um, I will talk about three points. First, it's about use of learning during social distancing. And next, about uh, how to evaluate the learners and then we we'll go to the key of successful. We we'll go to the first one. 
is the lesson learned from Thailand. So we'll go to about the choice of learning during social distancing. This one is will be include application including LMS like a learning management system and the program. So if we talk about the learning management system, um, this is the like a programs to manage like uh, the course including content management, learning activity and evaluation of learner. There are many software used in different colleges in and university in Thailand depending on their context. I will show you some of the LMS. This is widely used in Thailand then. Um, next uh, about the Moodles and Open edX. I think so everyone will heard about the Moodle before. This is a free and open source software and I to uh, to use to create with online course with educators and trainer to achieve learning goals. And this one is matched with a Linux server and because it's used some in different server in different uh, universities. So they choose the different uh, LMS as well. Next is the Open edX is the open source as well from MIT USA. This is look the same as Moodle, but it is quite complicated to use rather than Moodle, which is used in the large organizations or institutions. Next is the Blackboard. I think this one is um, widely used in the Western University. And it is good security system, but it is not free. Yes, you have to pay for the cost. It's, it is quite um, expensive if you have like, like a, a large number of students or users. Next is a cost really. Uh, this is the this the LMS is developed by Chulalongkorn University, Thailand, and it is used within the university. And it's you the same like a Moodle and SX as well. Next, we use the Google Classroom. This one is uh, in use in the university, which is uh, reduced to the um, Gmail. And um, it's, it's come with like a Google Doc, Google Slide, and uh, which one uh, is all the product of Google application of Google for Education as well. So after you got the LMS to manage your classroom, or your short code learning, or your meeting. Um, we have a, a large or big data to choose to be your material for your teaching as well. We call Thai MOOC and Jula MOOC. This one is a, a large source of the material. And in primary or maybe high school, we got this time learning TV and this time learning IT as well, which is like a involve a lot of a lot of material from teacher um, this one is a sample of classroom which is made from Moodle that we can make and organize like a course design learning activity and evaluation how to evaluate your student or your learner this one can apply to be like a short course training in the hospital as well as when I show you some some uh, web page, like a capture from the page. And this one is a sample from classroom, from the Google Classroom. I'm sorry that with the, the technical problem that I can, because if it is, I can share my slide from my um, screen, I will show an exit to the real and um, the classroom and show the detail then. Next, uh, this one is like a, we can create like a, a lot of um, classroom in in Google Classroom. Next, uh, after we got the classroom, got LMS, then we have a tool for conference. I will show you how the um, conference of like a webinar as we use in this time. We use Microsoft Team. They got a lot of a lot of. Um, program or application that are useful for the like a 
um, user to apply with your meeting or your conference is like I will show you some some of program that is widely used in Thailand like a blackboard meet like a hangout meet from Google Meet we call Google Meet now like a, a Microsoft team that we use right now Zoom Webex Line and Facebook all of this is like a widely used in Thailand right now in different like a context or university or an organization it's like it is can make the chat room that you can chat to other people or other participants like uh, this program that you use right now you can chat if you have a question uh, for the like uh, the host who organized this uh, seminar um, next um, is some program have the cam camera and a microphone and allow you to discuss together except for Facebook that have haven't allowed to use the camera and microphone in a real uh, time discussion. Next is like uh, every program that I show you is can share the document with other people and uh, it's easy to access um, which is a browser except for Zoom that you have to download and application and install the application in, in your desktop and lie as well that we have the to access via the program or if live application is they haven't got the browser and it's have the time to record and it, this time is COVID-19 outbreak all of like a company allow you to register to use those applications for free but after this after six months later maybe you have to pay for the cost you will be charged maybe four dollar per user per month like uh, google meet right now they allow you to use uh, the application for conference and allow people to up to 250 get up uh, participant and if they have more than 250 participants it will go to like a stream live in YouTube so it can increase allow uh, participants uh, up to uh, 10,000 participants this like a uh, you have uh, to to check which one is suitable for you and you are like a meeting first then you will can choose which one is appropriate and the majority of those programs is permanent. Like uh, if you read this already, it will have like uh, the channel to communicate together, except for Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Webex. You, ha you have to set up like uh, in each meeting that you want. And uh, the majority of the program have the whiteboard to, to write to to say something to others except for line and Facebook and the all program have like a, you have to have account to access this and user as well except for Zoom that the user doesn't need to read this they can access via the links this one is our program that I try to to um, collect and compare between like uh, the uh, applications as you see in the top in the bottom you will see like uh, the number of the participant is uh, to to be allowed in that program is differences like some of programs allow to up to 250 and as i know after september google meet will decrease the participant like uh, down to 150 if you don't don't want to pay for the cost and this one is I will show you about next is about the the, the screen of Microsoft team that we use right now we use um, Microsoft team so you can see the how it look like and if you when you access you can like a uh, make a team make a uh, like a uh, room and it can be, um, it can be made like a Google Classroom as well, but this one is made like a 
for the large company not focus on like a educational institution so i think the feature is like a look like a not much attractive like a google uh, classroom this one is zoom zoom is used widely used in thailand as well in thailand the, i think chiang mai university and konken university also use this as well and and also chula longkorn university and the sesa universal is look like when you use like it but the limitation of zoom is is um provide to record only 40 minutes so that one is quite short if you want to to make a like a long long uh meeting or uh, maybe teaching you have to pay the cost and this one is the feature that we can show i think the same the same as microsoft team as well next i will tell you about the uh, webex this one is the one of the channel um without the like a on like a, in on this time in uh, you are lucky that they open to you to read this and use webex for free during the covid um outbreak so maybe if you have admin with you you can ask them to to join or to to apply because if you are the regist to be a host you can make like a the con conference or meeting uh, you can access to webex.com to register it as well and the features is look like um here do you see um yeah i i think in my slide i will show some features for that and next is a google meet like a they have some features from the Google Meet to share. It can make like a, a short um, conversation and small group conversation, and then can be a large group of conversation. I try to use with my student before it can, it can make the uh, meeting up to 250 participants. And after that, the rest of the student will go to like a stream on YouTube channel and they can also chat in the channel or YouTube channel as well if they have the question it's quite good and um, it uh, can record like a longer than four hours as well is I think is this better than uh, a Microsoft team on this function yes you can share the like a full screen and teach you can use with a video is good that the sound is 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 quite good as well I have no no problem of the sound so the other options are that i will show you for making your own uh, synchronous material is like a um, screen capture the first one is the screen classify if you want to record your presentation you can use this program now it's free for you in during uh, um coronavirus outbreak as well so it's, it's time for you to to join it and sh choose it and the other one is loom i call loom and this one is unlimited time to record it's it's good for you it's free for right now as well and, and it's quite work this one that I try to do and record my presentation for teaching when I haven't got a real time um, teaching with them. I will record and ask them to to share like a uh, exit and see my presentation and my teaching online. It's like a uh, one of your material which is useful for you. The other one we call Echo 360. Um, this one is the screen record as well and widely used in Chulalongkorn University. So next, after you create your classroom and learning activity by using many uh, a variety of material, how to evaluate the learners? They have many ways to evaluate your learner. I think you haven't seen the Bloom taxonomy before. 
this one if compared to the digital taxonomy you will see they have like a, the base of the taxonomy like uh, if you want to check the creation of your student or your learner which program but which is suitable and useful for you for example like a uh, youtube that you can ask your learner or your participant to record something that is come from the like a conceptual idea and show you how to um, how to evaluate your your learner from YouTube as well. So the other one is Jamboard. Jamboard is a product from the Google. And this one is you allow the student or your learner to join to share the board together and write or draw together in the same time. And next is like Chrissy. Uh, um, this one can make the questions to ask your learner. Maybe it looks like game because the learner will be like excited to play because when they are do the test, while they are doing the test, the they will see the ranking of themselves and they will like uh, compete each other in the class or in that meeting. That is quite fun when you use in the um, in your class. And next is a car hood. Car hood that is the same as Chrissy, but it's you have to play real time, real time together. Chrissy, you can make like a homework and allow your student or your learner to play as a homework as well. And this one, if Chrissy can use with the Google Classroom, you can hand in hand hand on hang on it on the, your classroom. But in terms of the Kahoot, you have to play real time in the class because the learner will see the screen from the teacher and they will play and they will play or choose the choice in, in their um, mobile phone. This one is look like that's the question will come out and the learner will see this one from the screen of um, the big screen. And then they will choose the answer from their um, like a mobile phones. Uh, this one is a program is quite useful. Like uh, you create the video and after you stop some video in some place and you ask question why you are. And if you pass the question or do the correct answer, you will go to the next state of the video. So you can make it called it puzzle. Sorry that I cannot show the real um, video for you because of in terms of technical problems. So next, uh, we can use like a Google form to make the questions for your student as well. And Moodle also, Moodle Classroom also can can make the quiz as well. I think it's quite good if you want to 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 do like a homework for your student. You have to pre-test, post-test, like a lesson in every lesson as well. You, it depends on your design for your course. So all of this is the program that we use to evaluate your learner. Yes, that, that is quite good. That, uh, the, like a, um, after they learn something, they should test their like a knowledge, something like that. And the last sessions, I uh, will talk about the key of successful after we try to use many of program, many of LMS and variety of like uh, the uh, materials. The, I can conclude the key of success in three, three points. First is like a material and internet asset, including hardware, um, equipment and speed up internet, both teacher and learner. As um, after I try to practice with my student, and I ask them after learned, and and the majority of this, uh, who who stay in like a in a rural area and haven't I haven't got the high speed internet 
they have uh, problems for maybe some delay of the voice of the teacher. So that's why the the way to solve this problem, the teacher should record your teaching and allow the student to go back to see it, to watch it after teaching at the class as well. Uh, before they do like uh, the post test, I think this, uh, this one is the way to to solve these problems. And uh, the second point is about the teacher. The teacher should have the skill of teaching and they have to encourage your student and empower and feed forward to the learners all the time. For example, if you ask something in your learning management system like a Google Classroom and the student will come to answer your question, but you did not feedback them. You 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 leave like a seven days later and you feedback them. It will make them like I don't want to join you, don't want to participate in your class anymore. It's not active learner. Uh, this one is 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 need to to improve in the teacher and the second one is like a technology in digital literacy that if you want to use any any equipment you have to keen to use that and you have to practice that material before to present that uh, you know what is useful as it, is, it will be good for the student as well and last time, last last part is the learner, because this time we is a down learner. The the participant should be have a high responsibility, because if they have like a low responsibility, they just attend like a access to your class, but they did not, they did not stay, keep stay on the screen. So what happened? They did not meet your objective. Right, and the the other one is uh, honesty. Like uh, they have to, when they do the test, they have to honesty. Like uh, they have to 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 ensure that they did not like uh, do something wrong, something like that. Uh, this one is the uh, the end of the slide. And do you hear me? I think I. Okay, Dr. Sushiwa, yeah, I can hear you. Do you can hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Sushiwa Wichaiko. The very, very nice presentations, even though uh, we are not see your presentation, but still you have been delivered the presentation with clear voice and very clear explanations. And also, frankly, that I was impressed that uh, we are so have so many device or apps that we can use to to kill the boring time because of this outbreak of pandemic uh, COVID-19. So, um, yeah, uh, we have some uh, insight for your uh, presentation as well. And we have uh, questions from the participants. Uh, mm -hmm. There is from Normandy Domingo. Normandy Domingo is from... Uh, Philippines. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he is a student from the Casabula National High School. Um, the question is nowadays different apps or platforms are being used as well in the area of health promotions. Uh, how does Thailand government ensure that the telecommunications and use of application trends serve as an essential tool for the health programs of your governments so i think that i as i told you that um it depends on the the context of that area is some okay. area they they use uh is like uh uh they use free first they, they will use free application first like that now um uh hangout meeting is uh mm -hmm. open source for free uh, if you have the Gmail account, and uh, you can use that. And I think some of area they apply to use that one. But if if they have some cost or budget to pay, they can upgrade to use the other one, which is 
maybe uh, can support a large number rather than that. And because the now hangout meet is just only 250 participants. And, mm -hmm. and, and of course, they have to, to train to train the um, healthcare officer to use that one as well. Like uh, now they have uh, the primary healthcare um, uh, belong to the Ministry of Public Health. They try to uh, set up some course to train the like uh, officer to use this program. And then they will go to like uh, the uh, uh, healthcare worker who work in the area as well. Okay. Okay, so um, can I ask you about the, is there any um, mobile apps or uh, web design apps, web based apps for the, from the Thailand's governments and we can have free access to them regarding this COVID-19 pandemic that, you know, we have a problem between the, the teacher and the students and is there any policy from the government that, okay, you can use this platform that is free for you, for all the students or the uh, higher students in the Thailand that they can use to, to the, um, for the education, the continuity of the education in the Thailand? Um, do you mean the application which is made from the government, right? Yep. So we haven't got the application which made from the government now, which is used for like a, a conference. But we have like mm -hmm. um a, some um specific program or application like a drug use um maybe uh so uh, medicine or maybe to to make some decision making for your symptoms it's like primary health care we also have like a, a like a the special special um program or application which is used in different is different uh participants and uh but for the, if they allow the government is not like a strict much strict mm -hmm. to to use free of application. You can apply like now. I, I see many, many of the institute use like uh, open source application like a Google Meet. And in COVID-19, 19 outbreak that I told you that there have many, many of program ap application allow you to register in this time in six months. So mm -hmm. um, in different situation they choose is their own like a uh, application which suits for the um, institute like if you have the if you are user or you are officer have a gmail then we go to google application if you have like a microsoft word uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, office and microsoft office you will go to microsoft team something like that okay very nice answer um the next question is from Doni Harisandi from the Almata University students from Indonesia as well. The question is, what is the most effective way to find out interest of students during the COVID-19? Maybe because of we are not uh, directly interacting with interactions with the teachers and also uh, with the, our friends that we have to be uh, overcome this these problems because we have to meet virtually is is really really different right for between uh, directly or non directly um, what can we find the the most effective way to find out the interest from the students mm, i think it's weak. you you mean we find the interest of the student right yep. we we can use like a online survey right now because okay. it's social distan distancing if you want to do to, to see something from uh, the uh, the idea from your student maybe you can provide the online questionnaire or maybe uh, some um, short questions ask them to share their ideas and like uh, maybe you will collect the the idea i can summarize yes so what is the 
very popular application for the in Indonesia we can say we are so friendly with the Zoom meeting you know mm. to conduct the, some um, education process between teacher and um, learner uh, but regarding the security issue but we still have so many issues because uh, if we know the phenomenon is a Zoom bombing that some some uh, unresponsibility people coming to join our uh, meeting and then they uh, distract us and disturbing our discussions. How can we solve this problem? Uh, and how the the condition in the Thailand like what is the the most uh, favorite or popular that applications uh, video meeting in the Thailands? Um, the popular one is that why I, I that I show you all is can. It's different context and different university. That like a Zoom, we also use in different university as well, like uh, a Jualongkorn University, Mahayidon, um, Konkan, uh, Chiang Mai, Kasesat. But mm. the limited of like a Zoom, as you know, it can record mm -hmm. only forty minutes, and the security yep. now Zoom is banned from unit USA, as you know. So mm -hmm. because the security problems. So um, it depends on the, the context as well. That and in my college, we use we prefer to use the Google Meet mm -hmm. because it uh, is unlimited to record right now. And I mm -hmm. think it's quite clean and clear when we try to compare with other other uh, applications. Yeah. And this one is I I think we try to use like a Microsoft Team first time, and I think we got a lot problem and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. problem is we need to subscribe and to pay yeah, the subscriptions. Pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not pay, you have to limit it only four hours to use to record. Yeah. After yeah. four hours, we have a lot of problems. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Susiwa Lichaiko, for your time and then for your presentations. Um, so, okay, for all you. participants, um, ladies and gentlemen, no. Uh, we are moving to the second round discussions in the second session of this international webinar. And well, I will introduce the second speaker. Um, she is Karen K. Majos. She is PhD candidate in the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. And she is originally from Philippines and she is also my friends again. And from the International um, Leadership Food and Nutrition that we met last year in the Bali during the ASEAN Congress National um, Nutrition. So, hello, Karen. Can you hear me? Karen? Hi. 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 Can you hear me okay? Yeah, um, how is it going? Is everything okay? Going. Uh, so I'm having trouble uploading my PowerPoint. I'm, I wonder if you can see it because I'm trying to upload it now. Okay, but you can, firstly, you can uh, try to open your camera so okay. I can <laughs> I can see your picture. All right, so hi, um, I am sh trying to share it now. Okay. Oh, okay. So I guess, I guess that's it. Can, can everyone see it? Yep. Can everyone see it? Give me it, cause I I can't hear your um I can't see your comments at the moment. So I'm on my screen, my full screen. So let me hear from you, Adi, if people can actually see my presentation. Um. Honestly, I cannot see your slides presentation, but. Uh, maybe because of the delay of the internet connections. I think so I will the same problems. Yeah, the centralized technical yeah. issue, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't know why. Um, because now it's longer than four hours, I think. Oh, maybe, maybe that's the problem. Um, for the all participants, we are also opening a link in the chat room so you can see from the live streams in the YouTube as well. Mm, but I'm so sorry that we cannot share the slide presentations. 
yeah. think this is because the technical problem of the Microsoft Teams. Um, how can the sorry? Um, wait a minute. Can we continue, Herwinda? Can we continue the discussions? Because hello. So I've, I've sent the file, the presentation to her window. So I, I was wondering if she could have it on the controller. Okay, let let's try. Let me try. Where is it? Where? So, um, so we will try to share screen from the Karen's PowerPoint okay. presentations. Okay, um, should I start sharing now? Because it's actually currently being shared on my end. So I'll just stop sharing now and let probably her window do okay. it. Okay. So can anyone to form the committee, uh, Almata University has having the presentation from the Karens? and helping me to showing the presentation in the share screens because mm. it's already open Sorry. No. This one? Okay. We have a large number of participants. So on my end, it says it cannot display content and it couldn't start the presentation. So it just briefly comes and then go. Um, yeah. Can we just uh, download? Yeah, we, we, we are still waiting because um, the size of your presentation is quite a big it's also. Hard, yeah, I've got a couple of images in there. Yeah, okay. Um, Hold on one sec. Okay, um, computer line, what do you want? Computer line, I'm going to share. So, so only one more day. Oh. Mm. Sixty seven. Ini saya ini saya. Bukan opening. Soalnya kembali ke dia.
Mana? Yeah. Okay, we got it. Oh, thank you, Alji. So <laughs> everyone can watching the slides. Okay, Karen, yeah. can you see? I'm not seeing it. <laughs> it's nowhere to be seen at the moment. Um. I'm sure it's the same for everyone. Yeah, it's already shared. Can you see? I'm not really. So Karen, can you share your screens? Uh, because I have shared my screen and you cannot see the PowerPoint. So let's try. Um, so I'm sharing, I'm trying to re-upload mine at the moment. And I, I will stop share this PowerPoint presentations. Uh, so um, I don't think this will work in my case because something in the system won't let other people see my presentation. Although, you can see it. Can you try again, maybe it, just one time? It says because my my technicians say that uh, it should be you to be shared your screen. So, so it, just it, it will just appear for one second and um, mm -hmm. disappear again. My my PowerPoint. I wonder what happened. So, is there any way we could? Not bisa, not bisa, not bisa. Tak bisa kita upload ni. Tadi 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 coba. Tak bisa. So, do you get it? No, I don't think anyone can see it apart from you guys. Yeah. Unfortunately, so. That, um, so how do you want me to go about it? <laughs> do you want me to proceed without the slides? Or uh, wait. yeah, we can have a recording of it. So can can we just can we just starting without the PowerPoint uh, presentation? But you can use your presentation. You can still have, keep explain explain your presentation, but without the slide screens. Yeah. Uh, can can everyone see me? My face. Um, I can't see you. <laughs> honestly, I'm st I'm still cannot see you. Your face come up. I'm I'm under recording. So my my camera is on. So I'm I just plan to probably show this slide show from another computer, which is I'm about to, okay, that won't, that won't work as well. Oh dear. Okay. Um, so I'm Karen and today I'll be talking about the benefits of urban gardening during coronavirus 19 quarantine. It's uh, just a shame that we wouldn't be able to present the slides as this would have been more effective in conveying the different factors that impacts the current global food security and nutrition and also um, at a household level uh, on a community scale um, at which I would have been showing to you now. So I'm so sorry if you cannot see my face <laughs> how do i do it um i i um, can i have turned my camera on so hold on let 
let me just do something about it. Okay, you can still see me, Aji? Yep. Yep. Got it. Let's go. Okay. You, you see me now? So, I'm an urban gardener for seven years. Apart from my experience in gardening, I also have experience in traditional gardening and composting for seven years now. I'm a member of this app we call Share Waste Community, wherein you are able to donate and receive scraps, kitchen scraps from different areas in your community, in your neighborhood. Um, and apart from that, I'm currently a doctoral student at the University of New South Wales in um, Sydney, Australia. I'm currently in Sydney at the moment and also doing casual lecturing at Kenvale College, tutoring and providing lectures about menu planning and nutrition. So as you can see, my background relates with food, nutrition and health. And that one is very le relevant to my passion, which is gardening. Um, and that's about me. So we talk about urban coronavirus 19 situation at the moment, and we see that uh, there are several things that's happening at the moment. The first is physical distancing. We don't we don't call it social distancing now. It's a, a maybe a, it may negate you know social um, being socially interacting with other people. So physical distancing may now be correct correct term. So measure, measures have varied from advisory recommendations to legally enforceable measures. So we've heard from the earlier speakers what these measures and approaches that are developed in different countries at the moment. Uh, second is as a result to physical distancing, there has been closure of workplaces and schools. So work from home and remote learning were possible. There is unnecessary activity outside that is being discouraged Third would be travel restrictions. So there's international and domestic travels are restricted at the moment, especially those with the coronavirus hotspots. And the last would be stay at home orders. Many countries and urban areas have imposed various quarantine measures to try to limit the spread of the virus. virus. So at the moment, people are staying at home indoors as much as possible refraining from doing any possible outdoor activities at the moment that may increase um, increase the risk of coronavirus cases in the community. And so how do we deal with coronavirus? I have several factors included the negative impacts of coronavirus. Uh, we know that physical distancing has been effective as what the previous speakers have discussed. It's been effective in flattening the curve. We know that it's doing more good than harm. Some of the downsides of staying at home for longer periods of time, although it may be effective in uh, flattening the curve, it has physical, you know, it has downsides, including lack of concentration, depression, and uncertainty of the, pe uh, of the future. So people face uncertainty and difficulty in this pandemic. Now, I want to focus on the negative impacts on of COVID-19 on food and agriculture. Being a food scientist and nutritionist researchers, I like to focus on food systems. So we have impacts on food systems because there are border closures, quarantines. Uh, we have closed the food supply chains and there are trade disruptions at the moment. So. The issue for that to be, we need to be addressing is to ensure food supply chains con con are being continued and protected so that there will still be a food supply, continuous food supply that are currently being um, high demand at the moment. Second is food insecurity. We know that access to sufficient and diverse and nutritious sources of food are now very um lacking, especially to those who are vulnerable and who are already being exposed to food insecurity even before the start of this pandemic. 
The third one is food prices and demand. Uh, we know that rice have increased, and many of you can agree that rice have dramatically increased from the start of the pandemic. Uh, palm oil and maize or corn have declined, so it's not necessarily um, that the, all, all of the food commodities have increased. It, some of them have increased and some of them have declined for different reasons. Uh, and because that's also because of the impact of this pandemic. So we want to assure food safety. We also, last factor is household food wastage. There is, according to Food and Agriculture Organization, 30% of the total food waste are uh, household food wastage. So we want to reduce household food wastage uh, by simply making an approach by starting out a garden in your community and in your household, which I will be talking about in a few. And we have seen a rise in gardening. It's now being encouraged during the pandemic. There is crisis in Australia at the moment where I am in and the government is currently encouraging sustainable veggie gardens during coronavirus. Also in Jakarta, um, where the, the slides where I'm supposed to show you are some of the news articles that have recently um, that have recently on the news and on the all over the net about urbanites or people who live in the urban communities finding solace in urban farming amid COVID-19 quarantine. So what is urban gardening? It's the practice of cultivating, processing, and distributing crops or animals in or around a village, town, or city. Now, farming is more of a business uh, and technology-oriented, and it's usually on a large-scale production. So for the purpose of this presentation, I would like to limit it to urban farming because urban, I'm um, sorry, urban gardening. So let's define gardening as the one that produces food for home subsistence and homesteading for private consumption of food. And that's because we, want, we need to stay home as much as possible. So there are different types of urban gardening, including micro farming. Micro farming has different kinds and classifications. And for this, um, for the purpose of this presentation, I like to limit that to home gardening. We have community gardens, institutional gardens, and small scale commercial farming. But for micro farming, we will focus on the different kinds of home gardens. We have roof gardens, traditional gardens, vertical indoor gardens, container gardens, and raised beds. So these are the different kinds of micro farming you can actually do at the comfort of your own backyards and your even indoors. Um, in my PowerPoint, it, I, I can you know send it to. Um, to someone for your reference later. Uh, I've, I've shown different pictures of these kinds of micro farming you can actually do at home. So, and now I'll be talking about the benefits of urban gardening first at the individual and household level. So in different aspects, the first one would be health aspect. The benefits of urban gardening at the individual and household level is for sure. When you start gardening, there have been several studies that have established an association between home gardening and physical and mental well-being. This has been demonstrated for various categories of people at risk. It improves mood and mental health access to safe and nutritious food, healthy eating, and increased physical activity. Okay, so at the social aspect, we are able to engage family members, include children to garden, you know, including children to participate in these kinds of act activities. And this will kind of give them an appreci appreciation of the value of food that they eat 
thereby uh, it, it, we will, it will impact their mental and physical well-being as well because they will now have the more they acknowledge the food that they eat, the more they appreciate it, the more that they are able to uh, be mindful with what they're eating, especially food, safe and nutritious food, such as fruits and vegetables. At a social level also, social co cohesion by working together in building green spaces, uh, distance learning on topics relevant to gardening, economic level level so there's if you start planting a garden in your own homes there's less transportation you don't need to go out for to buy something from the market well whatever it is in your garden you are able to access it without having to go out and that will reduce transit related costs reduce carbon emissions reduce costs of maintaining recreational areas and that will it um directly impact your, the household. So we talk about ecological benefits of urban gardening. Uh, when you start gardening, you will eventually learn how to manage your waste. You will make use of all the food scraps by waste separation, by composting, and thereby you will improve the um, conversion of the food food waste to something that can be reused to enrich the soil. You will also improve that biodiversity. And how can you do that? Because when you start a garden, you start to attract pollinators such as birds, bees, and mm -hmm. all the other insects to your garden. Or and also you can you are able to convert your, you know, just simple garden lawns to crop yielding spaces. And that's what's really uh, something beneficial at the household level. So who can do it? To truly change our food system, we need 15 million new people growing food in their local community. That means that to grow something uh, and to make an impact at a global level, at a global scale, we need 15 million new people to start growing food. And that starts from each and every household. So at a community level, if we go to the impacts and um, benefits of urban gardening at a community level, this applies during coronavirus while everyone is on lockdown, while everyone is on quarantine. Uh, you will be, the, the risk of obesity and the prevalence of obesity will tell health and well-being is improved for populations mostly affected by COVID-19, at a social level, poverty alleviation, social inclusion, social safety nets, and improved food security and nutrition. Economic level. So you want to make that community market oriented. Small scale household based city farming, income generation, because you start uh, a family-based enterprise and you start generating income in the comfort of your own homes. You don't need to go out. Um, and you, there is, you can still practice physical distancing measures and this approach you can do by shipping or, or you know, within the community, you don't really need to meet other people. You can just drop these produce at their doorstep without having to meet them face to face. Ecological benefits. So like as previously said, eh, at the household level, the same benefit at the big, bigger the impact it is on a global scale. Reduction in energy and greenhouse gas emissions by local food production, maintaining green spaces. Imagine if every household in a community has maintained a small garden in their homes. Um, also, productive use of urban waste, if everyone knows how to compost and recycle their all their kitchen scraps into something reusable for uh, soil enrichment and fertilizer, then that would make 
a better community. Um, and because I'm a nutritionist, I'd like to talk about nutritional benefits for of consuming garden food during coronavirus lockdown. So we have a healthy, balanced diet. If we have enough fruits and vegetables at our backyard, it will meet your recommended serves of fruits and vegetables. We have proteins from legumes and healthy fats from nuts and seeds. Everything you can actually plant in your backyard. Um, garden food will help us avoid frequent snacking because we instead snack on, you know, carrots, celery, cucumbers, instead of ultra processed and sugary foods, we can limit them to a minimum. And then because we have garden herbs, we are able to reduce sodium and we use these herbs to uh, produce long life, long life sauces. We rely on shelf stable foods that can increase, um, that can instead be substituted, uh, in substituted for salts to preserve foods. So having a range of herbs and spices on hand can help boost the flavor of foods without having to add salt. Lastly, we keep our digestive system healthy by eating high fiber foods because Fruits and vegetables are good sources of fiber. Okay, so we start growing our food after we acknowledge all these benefits at individual, household, and community level. And well, you want to start by, you know, knowing the requirements. The first requirements is space. You know, urban city farming is a bit challenge, challenge in terms of providing space. And that is any area outdoor indoor that will have good access to sunlight. As long as you can provide a square meter of space, that will be enough to start your own garden. Soil, the best soil for most plants to ensure optimum growth is a rich sandy loam. That is sandy silt and clay all together. And garden tools. So any one of the many tools for gardening, uh, it can be hand tools or power tools, and then your seedlings. You can simply impre um, you can start out with any seeds that you want. If you cannot go out to buy them, there are online websites that can ship seedlings or seeds. Or you can start out from seed right from your kitchen. So whatever that's left behind, uh, keep the seeds dry them and let them germinate if we have plenty more time you know in in another opportunity i'd like to discuss more on this but since in the interest of time we can just um go to the next slides and that's about um home gardening different kinds of home gardening so if you have a rooftop that has um, empty space it can be cultivated into something that's productive and start a roof garden. Next would be traditional garden, uh, which is, you know, typical garden uh, set up as long as you have a bar backyard and a good soil. Next would be a raised bed and wicking bed. Um, that's something that's elevated so that you can simply... Um, you can simply change the soil once the season has ended. So this is what I use at home. And raised bed is, for me, one of the most practical ways you can uh, start out a garden. Then uh, there's vertical gardening or green walls. Then square foot gardening, if you have a square foot that's available um, in your door and you have a square foot um, wooden pallet, then that's that's a go signal for you to, to start out gardening. Then container gardening. So this is very common in Asia, especially Southeast Asia and East Asia. Sorry, South Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, container gar gardenings are simply those that can be contained in any container, such as pots or plastic cans, tins, or anything that has you know, a good, good access to, to air and water. Okay. Now people in the urban community say that there's really not much pace 
for a backyard gardening. Then we have different other solutions such as windowsill or kitchen herb garden. We can start microgreens uh, for your salads and this can all be a solution to have to this can this approach can be done indoors. You don't need an outdoor setup for you to be able to do this and contained indoor plants. I have lots of indoor plants that are, you know, I grow as food. For example, um, bay leaf. I have a bay leaf tree in my in my indoor and I use that when I cook Filipino adobo or something like that. So we out we have other mini gardens. Um, for example, growing herbs in hanging planters, if you have a very limited space in your veranda, you can just hang them in planters or you can recycle handbags or grow bags and use them as railing planters. So these are just a good examples. So we have, we can actually grow food from scraps. Example would be celery from scraps, and then you can start propagating it when you just mm, submerge the bottom in the water. And after seven to 10 days, the plant outside, um, you can plant outside in soil and water as, as, as soon as it starts producing the roots. What we have lemongrass, basil, pineapple, hot peppers, cabbage, garlic sprouts, all of these are very much accessible at the moment, even during the COVID. If anyone ha has access to markets, you can start them out, um, you know, use the, the, the flesh and keep the, the seedlings and also the, the scraps, like the bottom, the root part. So you can keep them and propagate the roots, try to help them produce the roots by submerging them under the water and after a few days you can start out your garden. Tomatoes, ginger, avocado, potatoes, pumpkins, etc. Now we move on to composting. So we it's it's a a challenging process for urban fellows for for urban residents because it needs um, space, a lot of materials, and it takes time. And also the smell wouldn't really be that good when you are in close prox proximity with it. So you start with, for people who have backyards or, have, or who have, you know, enough space for them to compost, you can start with nitrogen materials or what we call the green matters then the carbon materials or the brown matters so greens are nitrogen rich compost materials this would be coming from your vegetables crops fruit peels and rinds grass clippings coffee grounds coffee filters tea leaves so even your tea bags and your toilet roll can be you know used to provide used to, to provide nitrogen and carbon. So tea bags are nitrogen sources. Well, you know, toilet paper rolls, I keep them for my carbon source of my compost. Then fresh leaves. So all of these usually, you know, fresh green are the nitrogen rich sources. You get your carbon from the brown matters. What are these? These are the dry leaves, wooden chips, twigs, straw, tree bark, eggshells, cardboard, shredded paper, newspaper, and, you know, um, you know, dried needles or pine needles, whatever you see on the street. As soon as you have all of this, you know, it's just a matter of ratio. Um, I've given several talks about how you can give, um, produce a good soil from your compost. It's just a matter of good ratio. Um, okay, Karen, you still have two minutes left. Okay, I'm, I'm already ending. So uh, it's usually um, uh, ro rotary compost tumbler, or you can have bokashi, or you can have other kinds of uh, composting or farming, for example, worm, worm farming that are able to pre-compost your kitchen scraps. 
So if you don't have space, that's okay. Um, you are able to donate your compost or, and kin kitchen scraps to those who need it. Uh, for example, we have a share waste app wherein you are able to provide or donate food scraps. Uh, also, we are currently discouraging it at the moment to practice physical distancing. Okay. So that ends my presentation. Thanks for listening. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen, for your informative talks uh, about the, the benefit of urban gardening during this pandemic of COVID-19. So we have so many insights from your, your yeah, presentations. It's, it's just a shame I couldn't provide the uh, visual presentation, but if there's um, you know, another opportunity, I would love to you know, speak about it again. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have um, questions from the participants as well. Uh, and it is quite of interesting topic because uh, nowadays people going with the modern area, we are going to develop and also using the free land to build some apartments or buildings, housing and everything. So we need to just considering that we should uh, make some area or space from the, our backyard or front yard so we can do our own urban gardening. So this is so beneficial. So the question is that Dwi Pajati, Dwi Pajati is from Indonesia. Uh, the question is, if many households can do gardening activity in their house to fulfill their food need, especially fruit and vegetables, how about the seller in the market? Is the condition will make the vegetables and fruit seller become brick for their activity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, and the answer is n no, it's a win-win situation. And that's because um, homesteading or food subsistence for the family is the production of food at a minimal level. So it's like starting out a garden doesn't mean that everything that you need for consumption will be provided by your garden. So at some level, something from the commodities that you need will still have to be bought from the market. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I'm going to say it will only b bring balance to the community. So a balance with the needs of the household and the needs of the, uh, the market. Like, yeah, vegetable then or farmers. I would say farmers. Yeah. Um, so it will still be beneficial for both as long as the food chain supply is normal especially now during coronavirus. So if there is high demand with something that pushes the household to actually create a f that, that kind of food on their own. Um, but um, other than that, uh, it, there is still a balance between these aspects. Okay, yeah. Yeah, in my opinions as well, that uh, it depends on the how, the, how we have the, the big or wide our field uh, or our area that we can use to urban gardening so if we have produce more and more so it maybe we can open a small business to That's selling the yeah, fruits and can, vegetables you can start you know producing one commodity which you can uh, scale up into you know something large in at a market level and uh, that com that particular commodity you can sell and then buy something mm -hmm. from others with you know another agricultural commodity okay yeah um the second question is from st norwanti uh, from indonesia the question is because not many spaces for the gardening you said that we can try indoor gardening. What kind of plan suitable for indoor gardening in Indonesia? Is it similar with Australia? Yeah. Um, no. So my background is Filipino. I've lived in the Philippines for, mm -hmm. you know, of my life and then moved to Korea for five years. And then now I'm in Sydney. Um, I'm on my fourth year now, but I've, I did gardening in 
these countries. So I have experience in the Philippines starting out a garden myself, and I would say it's different. Uh, number one, the seasonality is different, the availability, the crops, the varieties are all different. So I've been, it's a shame I couldn't show my slides, but here I'm showing how the seasonality differs from country to country. So that should be factored in when you plan to start out a garden. Um, so the kinds of garden, was that question that, um, is it the same, the, the kinds of, uh, what kind of suitable plant that we can oh, plant. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> plant in the indoor? Indoor plants. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the similar herbs in Indonesia or Southeast Asia and in, in Australia. I have started, you know, planting herbs indoors in my window seals in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and it wasn't difficult to grow uh, as long as you know the optimal temperature season. So we have two seasons in the Philippines, the wet and the dry season. You know that you cannot really start out, you know, sprouting or trying to germinate a seed by summer because it can be really hot and eventually your plant will die. So you have to know the optimal season seasonality. When you start buying seedlings, you will know at the back of the packet uh, when will be the best time to plant it. So you have to really do a lot of, dig into all this information and do your own research before you actually start something. Um, so important would be to be knowledgeable about the seasonality. So we have um, calendario ng pagtatanim. That's how is it in Tagalog. It's planting calendar is what you call it. We, you know your climate. In Australia, we are starting the winter season. So we're now mm -hmm. starting to, you know, produce garlic from garlic bulbs that we purchased ourselves um, from the market um, and broccoli cauliflower. So it's different now in Manila because it's summer. So uh, for those living in Manila, I really wouldn't advise starting out now. Maybe it will be harder for your, you know, seedlings to grow. Maybe like start by June. So it will be somehow similar to Indonesia, Indonesia because we share the same, same climate now. We are okay. like summer. Yeah, so, yeah, we have the same seasons. All right. Okay. The last questions. The last question is from Normandy Tomingo from the Philippines that uh, the question is the urban gardening is a great way of addressing problems on food supply. Can urban gardening pose potential problems? How do we prevent these problems? Um, urban gardening pose problems in a commercial scale? Yeah, maybe. Um, so I think that question was similar to the first question. Um, mm -hmm. So it, I, it doesn't I don't see any risk of uh, problems in terms of urban gardening and upscaling it because as long as there is balance in the food supply chain, then it it really won't be a big problem. It, it okay. as a matter of fact, it poses more good than harm to that community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, okay. Well, I well, what I can say is, when there is, um, when when there is a, <laughs> we go to food and demand supply. So as long as there is um, food demand, there will be enough supply for everyone. Okay, correct. Yeah, I do agree with that. So this is the last questions um, sessions for um, our speaker, uh, Miss Karen. So thank you very much, Karen, thank for your time and so uh, for your joining this international yep. webinar and sharing about a urban gardening that is so so useful, beneficial for us that we could start to do urban gardening in it's, our it's, own home or our own, own environments. Okay. Yeah, like being being in, like we are nutritionists, Aji, and you know how, yeah. and, you know, food 
security means to every household. So we must, we know how important to be sustainable uh, and we can support ourselves. So my, you know, final statement is when life gives you quarantine, you need to plant potatoes. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> That's a statement that we can hold on for now while we're in on the lockdown. Okay, thank you, Karen. So thank one you. one more one more thing, Karen. That uh, participant asked about the uh, can we share your presentation to the all participant because. Yeah. So Leah has apparently shared my PowerPoint and. Oh that yeah. Thank you, Leah, and that's um, for everyone to see. I I think I I have you know provided in just how we we can start gardening during the lockdown, and okay, okay. Do, like the different options to start out a gar gardening based on the space they have in their homes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for and the your inspirative talk. So mm -hmm. yeah, bye bye. See you another time, Karen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the last discussions in the second webinar series. Uh, so I will introduce the last speaker. She she is from Thailand and. No, she is not from Thailand. The last speaker is Esti Nurwanti. So sorry, Esti Nurwanti is my colleague from the nutrition department in Alma Ata University. So she is um, the dean of the Faculty of Health Science, University of Alma Ata, Indonesia. She is going to talk uh, about nutritional recommendations. So we we just have uh, discussion in the uh, urban gardening and then. The first one, how we use the telecommunication apps that we can use during this pandemic, COVID-19, during my activity, during our learning activity, and etc. So the, the last, we will have discussions in the nutritional recommendations for COVID-19 quarantines. Um, yeah. So please welcome um, Ms. Esti Nurwanti. So... It will be useful, I think, if uh, the, oper the operator technicians can send the PowerPoint presentation of S Ms. ST so they will can see the presentation as well because this is we have a problem with a technical issue about the share screens from the from the our laptop and also from the ST Ms. ST Norvanti laptop. So the Ms. Leah, can you just send the material of presentations from Ms. Esti Nurwanti so the all participants can access the presentations? So, well, you have 20 minutes to present your talk, Ms. Esti Nurwanti, and please join me, all participants, to welcoming Ms. Esti Nurwanti. Yeah, Mr. S. Dinarwanti, the time is yours. And okay, can you like. see me? What? Yeah, I can hear you, but I cannot see you. So okay. Just keep going, I think. So please, Miss oh. Leah, you can upload or send the PowerPoint presentation from the Ms. S. Dinarwanti so the participant can see the presentations. Okay, good luck, Ms. S. Okay, thank you everyone. Sorry for because uh, today our me online meeting is not working uh, properly because many problems such as maybe on, on Wi-Fi or maybe the uh, limit of the participant can join in this um, Microsoft Teams and also uh, uh, many uh, presenter cannot display the PowerPoint. We, we want to sorry for that. So maybe in the next uh, seminar in our webinar we can uh, do the do better than today. So, okay. Uh, today, I, I would like to present about the nutritional recommendation for the COVID-19 quarantine. 
And uh, because during quarantine, the uh, the outbreak of the COVID-19 may be stressful for people. So because almost every day we are here and read about the pandemic constantly without a break, uh, without a break. So during quarantine can be stressful for everyone. So and then uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak, also everyone should do the quarantine. And quarantine is associated with a work routine disruption, which may lead to boredom. So as a result, the tension drives people to overeat and often in search of, of comfort food. So what is comfort food? Comfort food is a sim- uh, food with simple preparation, but high calorie, high carbohydrate, fat, salt, and sugar. So... Um, during uh, quarantine also, the desire to consume the, a particular of form of food is described as food craving. So food craving include the emotional intense in, to, to desire to eat, behavioral seeking food, cognitive thought about food, physiological salivation process. And so this, uh, this condition like food craving is also uh, the prevalence of food craving particularly carbohydrate among women higher than men. So it's mean that women have higher intake of carbohydrate than men. So um, carbohydrate caffeine encourage serotonin production that in turn has positive effect on mood. In sense, carbohydrate is food can be a way like self-medicating and stress. So this is like positive effect on mood. So if a woman like have a stress, so just uh, eat the carbohydrate, something like that. And, but uh, because of the food crafting, um, it tend to like uh, have unhealthy nutritional habits. So, because and nutritional unhealthy nutritional habit could in, could increase the risk of developing obesity that beyond being a chronic state of inflammation and often complicated with heart disease, diabetes, and lung disease. So in the future, in the long time, so if the people eat an unhealthy nutritional habit uh, and also can increase also the risk for more serious complications uh, for COVID-19. As we know that uh, peop- a lot of people die because of uh, complication because the people have also the chronic disease such as diabetes or maybe um, heart disease and then they got the uh, infection of COVID-19 and easily to die. Um, uh, stress uh, because of the quarantine also is can uh, related to sleep disturbances and sleep dis- uh, disturbances also uh, related to higher food intake. So it is like dangerous vicious cycle. So uh, we stress and then cannot sleep and then have higher food intake. So the it is the important to consume the food containing or promoting the synthesis of serotonin and melatonin at dinner before sleep. So it is very, very important. So what uh, what of a, a variety of plants like that contain melatonin and or serotonin of tryptophan? Um, I show you in this slide that um, the food that contain uh, melatonin is such as roots, leaves, fruits, seeds such as almond, banana, cherries, and oats. And also uh, protein foods such as milk and milk uh, products such as yogurt is also important because the main sources of the sleep-inducing amino acid tryptophan. And tryptophan has related to regulation of satiety and calorie intake because can inhibit neuropeptide Y or hypothalamic or oxygen peptides. So it means that tryptophan can decrease the appetite, so uh, it, it also can reduce our food intake. So it, it's good. But but uh, if we have stress and sleep, sleep di- disturbance, uh, also the the trip to, uh, also the tryptophan from the food is uh, is uh, not not too many so it will lead to the obesity and milk and milk product or yogurt also can increase the natural killer cell activity and reduce uh, the risk of respiratory infection so and the increased intake of macronutrient also during quarantine may also be followed by deficit in micronutrient is as in obesity and it's related to impair the immune responses uh, immune responses uh, including cell mediated immunity phagocyte function cytokine production secretory antibody response and antibody affinity and the complement system so it it means that uh, if we uh, increase intake of macronutrient and also followed by deficit in micronutrient so it means that more susceptible to viral infection 
So uh, because of this condition, we need the uh, the lifestyle that can boost our immune function. Healthy and balanced nutrition pattern containing a high amount of mineral, antioxidant, and vitamin is very important. And also fruit and vegetable is also important because contain the micronutrients such as vitamin E, C, and beta-carotene. Beta so it is uh, uh, antioxidant. Because from the previous study found that antioxidant can increase the number of T cell subset, enhance lymphocyte response to mitogen, increase interleukin 2 production, potentiated natural kill cell activity, and increase the response to influenza virus vaccine compared with placebo. And, uh, and uh, antioxidant, uh, beta carotene is the most abundant in uh, sweet potatoes, carrot, and green leafy vegetables, and fat. Uh, vitamin C uh, can we can found in uh, red peppers, oranges, strawberries, broccoli, and so on. And also vitamin E, vitamin E we can found in vegetable oil, nuts, seeds, spinach, and broccoli. So how about the vitamin D? Vitamin D and human function because uh, during quarantine we have less time to spend outdoor and less sun exposure, so it can reduce the production of vitamin D as a result of lower level of seven dehydrocosterol in the skin and especially in a country that now is still winter, so it's uh, lead to uh, uh, people that li live in the, that country. Uh, uh, tend to have the vitamin D, the vitamin D deficiency, so it's uh, so it can increase the viral epidemics. So the function, we, we, uh, as we know that the function of vitamin D can reduce the risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and also hypertension. And vitamin D also have the other function related to the COVID, such as protect the respiratory respiratory tract preserving the junction, killing enveloparesis, and can decrease also production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So it means that all this function of vitamin D can reduce the risk of cytokine storm leading to the pneumonia. So vitamin D is important to boost our immune function. So how about the food that contain vitamin D? We, we can find in fish, liver, egg yolk, milk, and yogurt with added vitamin D. So... Uh, zinc and also have a function in to boost our immune system because previous study found that zinc inhibits super acute respiratory syndrome or SARS coronavirus, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, template binding and elongation in ferro E6 cells. And what kind of source of zinc is oyster, poultry, red meat, nuts, pumpkin seed, sesame seed, beans, and lentils. Um, but uh, even uh, in this, uh, during outbreak of coronavirus or COVID-19, we also like tend to have a uh, higher intake of Western diet. But Western diet, as we know that uh, have higher intake, uh, have high in a saturated fatty acid. And saturated fatty acid can lead to the chronic activation of innate human system and inhibit the adapt adaptive immune system. And previous study also found that high fat diet in mice increased the macrophage infiltration to lung tissue, especially the alveoli. Relevant to the COVID-19 patient, give the high rate of infection among lung alveolar epithelial cell and the involvement in the lung tissue inflammation and alveolar damage in COVID-19 pathology. So T and B cell count were also significantly lower in patients with severe COVID-19. So it's the, uh, it means that a potential interaction between Western diet consumption and also COVID-19 on adaptive uh, immune Im immunity environment. So from Aspen or American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, uh, they reported that, that uh, the fever, uh, because uh, the COVID-19 usually have a fever, and fever associated with the excess fluid loss and increased metabolism that can lead to the dehydration and increase the nutritional requirement. So the nutritional requirement of fluid, of fluid uh, for uh, COVID-19 patient recovering at home is around th three liters a day. Maybe for normal people, we only need fluid that, uh, that only two liters per day, but for the COVID-19 patient recovering at home, we need the three liters per day. And we uh, and the patient should drink the fluid every hour, drink two to four ounces every 15 minutes. So what kind of fluid? So the, the fluid is uh, including clear liquid, beverages with calories and protein, oral rehydration solution or sport drink. 
and also uh, nutrition and dehydration for COVID-19 uh, is including also the protein and calorie because protein and calorie are critical to protect against muscle loss while combating COVID-19, particularly when the patient are bedridden or inactive. And the nutritional requirement for calorie is high, is around 2,000 to 2,500 calories per day. And the the protein needs for the COVID-19 patient is around 75 to 100 grams per day. So how to consume high calorie and high protein diet? The patient can eat small amounts frequently, six times per day, every two to three, three hours, good protein sources such as peanut, milk, eggs, yogurt, cheese, meat, protein shakes, and also eat drink. Nutrient-dense food, drink uh, fruit juice, make an, uh, or other calorie-containing beverages, and or double, triple the portion size of either fats and oil and avocado. And also, uh, the, the patient can consume liquid nutritional supplement with, between meals. And I also find about the paper from Aspen or the European Society for the Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism. Um, from uh, this uh, paper, I found uh, interesting sentences that a future virus pandemic is related to a double burden of nutrition. So the virus pandemic can uh, also increase the risk of undernutrition or also overnutrition. So it means that double burden of malnutrition. So because of double of malnutrition, so the, it also can increase the severity of the disease. And uh, obesity... Uh, can increase one risk of being hospitalized with or and dying from an influenza virus infection. Obesity also can inhibit both virus specific CD8 plus TCA responses and also antibody respond to the seasonal influenza vaccine. So the challenge for the future virus pandemic is we uh, the health practitioner maybe or the other or communities should protect those who are affected by undernutrition and also obesity. So how about the nutrition management individuals at risk or infected by COVID-19? We uh, The first one, we should uh, check for malnutrition. So patient at risk for worse outcomes and higher mortality following infection with SARS-CoV-2. So is namely older adults and also polymorbid individuals. So polymorbid individuals mean that uh, people have to chronic disease such as diabetes with the uh, uh, heart disease or maybe with cancer or something. And uh, should we check using the MUST criteria for uh, or maybe for hospitalized patient um, can use the NRS 2002. The second one is we the should optimize the nutritional status. So subject with malnutrition should undergo diet counseling for an, an experienced professional and also uh, can eat the supplement with the vitamin and mineral. So particularly for malnutrition patient, should ensure the supplement with the vitamin A, vitamin, vitamin D, and other macronutrients. Uh, the patient also should have regular physical activity and also, but while taking the precaution, and also uh, oral nutrition supplements should be used whenever possible to meet a patient needs when dietary counseling and food fortification are not sufficient to increase dietary intake uh, and reach the nutritional goals. And uh, in patients whose nutritional requirement cannot be met orally, enteral nutrition should be administered. And parenteral nutrition also should be considered when the enteral nutrition is not indicated or insufficient. So how to uh, diagnose malnutrition? Uh, we can use two pinotyp pinotypic criteria or etiology criteria. Pinotypic criteria is uh, using the weight loss if the weight loss is more than 5% within past six months or maybe uh, more than 10% uh, beyond uh, six months or maybe body, be, uh, body mass in the index for Asia is less than 18.5 if the age is less than 70 years or something. You can see in this table. And also uh, reduce muscle mass, reduce by fat validated body composition measuring technique. We can see our muscle mass uh, using the BIA something. And uh, using etiologic criteria, so uh, reduce the food intake or assimilation. We can, uh, we can know from the 
uh, so how many food intake they like, eat every day like if the patient like only 50% of uh, food intake from the re- energy requirement is more than one week so it's mean that they have a uh, high risk of malnutrition or any reduction uh, for uh, more than two weeks or maybe any chronic uh, gastrointestinal condition that adversely impacts both food assimilation or absorption. And the last one is inflammation because uh, it is because the acute acute disease or injury or chronic re- disease related. So fr- the the energy requirement can be assessed using the indirect calorimetry is safely available, but we also can can use the prediction equation for uh, or weight based formula such as for for morbid patient or with chronic disease age more, more than uh, 65 years so the total energy expenditure is to uh, 27 kilocalorie per kilogram body weight per day we can calculate it, the calorie needs is using this formula and but we uh, we can we should consult with the nutritionist or dietitian and so, uh, if the patient has severely underweight and also polymorbid so the total energy in expenditure is higher is around 30 kilocalorie per kilogram body weight per day so how about the older person older person is around the energy needs is around the 30 kilocalorie per kilogram body weight per day but it should be individually adjusted with regard to nutritional status physical activity level disease status and tolerance and protein is are usually estimated using this formula also for all uh, this is almost the same not only for older person but also in for polymorbid medical in patient that the protein needs is a lot, uh, around 1 gram protein per kilogram body weight per day so we just can calculate it that if we have body weight is around uh, 50 and just uh, multiply by 1 so our protein is, is 50 gram per day and how about the fat and carbohydrate? Fat and carbohydrate needs are adapted to the energy needs while they're considering the energy ratio from fat and carbohydrate. So it's different like subject with no respiratory deficiency and a subject uh, with a ventilation, ventilator or ventilated patient. We, we can say ventilated patient. And because uh, for if the subject have no respiratory, respiratory deficiency, energy ratio from fat and carbohydrate is around uh, 30, 70. And for ventilated patient, the energy ratio from fat and carbohydrate is 50, 50. So the conclusion is, the good nutrition is crucial for health, particularly in times when the immune system might need to fight back. And individual refrain should refrain from the eating food in which a high in saturated fat is commonly in a Western diet and also sugar, and instead consume the high amount of fiber while grain and saturated fat and antioxidant to boost the immune function. And maintaining the nutritional status and for preventing or treating malnutrition is very, very also very, very important because can reduce the complication and negative outcome in patients at nutritional risk, which may incur the future COVID-19. So the last one is the having in mind positive attitude helpful to tackle the negative health effect of quarantine. Okay, that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Aji. Yep, thank you very much for your um, informative talk, Ms. Uh, Esti Nurwan- Nurwanti. So, um, we are moving to the Q&A sessions. So, please, participant, if you have questions, you can write down in the chat room box so we I can see and, and deliver to the presenter. Okay, we have one question from Normandy Domingo from the Casabula Nations High School from Philippines. The question is, uh, aside from eating a healthy balanced diet, enough sleep and exercise to keep our body healthy, do you recommend oral supplements to help strengthen our immune system? So yeah, please, Dr. Esti, you can answer. The questions okay thank you for the question 
um, we should also like calculate the, our uh, of antioxidant intake such as from beta carotene, vitamin C, and vitamin E. So if the consumption is enough from food, so we don't need the supplement. But the problem is if we cannot uh, like uh, eat the 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 food with the enough uh, the enough of the. Because we should know like uh, how many uh, vitamin C requirement per day for us for and uh, men and women sometimes different also and also how about the vitamin D could could we like uh, get the vitamin D from food or maybe from the sun exposure and how about the also zinc so can we also uh, eat the source of zinc is enough uh, a day something like that but maybe because of something like we are uh, we are very busy and we don't have time to prepare many kind of food that contain macronutrient and micronutrient that can fulfill our energy our macronutrient and micronutrient requirement and also we have like symptoms such as maybe like fever or maybe like a uh, our feel that uh, our body is uh, unwell, something like that. So we can consume the supplement. So it can help uh, to boost our immune function. Okay, so very clear explanation, Dr. Isti. So uh, what can I know that we, ha we have a sufficient uh, food intake and nutrient requirements that we have been at? Like how can we know that we are have a sufficient nutrient intake? So we, I, I don't have to take uh, oral supplements. Uh, maybe we, you, uh, we can just uh, use the smartphone application, or maybe using the nutri survey if you are nutritionist. But for maybe the general is we can use the smartphone app. It's easy to use, and we can just mm -hmm. put uh, our food intake. So maybe like in the breakfast. We eat this, uh, maybe rice or maybe uh, bread or maybe the other thing. And maybe in the lunch, we eat uh, something. And uh, in, uh, when dinner, we eat like uh, maybe oyster or something. So we can know like how many vitamin E or vitamin A mm -hmm. or vitamin D we already consume. So if it's still not enough, so we can just uh, uh, try to try to find the food first. <laughs> but if it's impossible, so... Uh, we can uh, eat the supplement, something. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for the explanations. And so, yeah, participants, so if you want to know the how do you calculate that, how much the sufficient requirement of nutrition that we eat, like everything that we eat every day, so you can use the mobile apps uh, and other mobile device that we can use it to control our diet pattern, to control our food intake as well. Uh, to the next questions, we have Etika Ratna. Etika Ratna is from Indonesia, I think. So how exercise as interventions, nutrition will take part to conquer the COVID-19 pandemic? So this is the question about the uh, interventions. Uh, involving with uh, exercise to yeah to conquer I think to conquer is like to improve our immune system to fight during the COVID nineteen pandemic this time so yeah Doctor Asti yeah of course the uh, the exercise is very good because uh, we it we can uh, to uh, optimize the our body uh, organ function and also cell function and also the uh, immune our immune function so if we have the uh, good exercise every day they can doing the routinely and maybe uh, in the in the more uh, maybe in, if you are living in Indonesia during the Ramadan, you can do the exercise before the breakfast, breakfasting, and then. Uh, but uh, if in the normal day, uh, maybe better like in the morning because we can get the sun exposure, so also can increase the vitamin D uh, to convert in our body, so also can improve our immune function. So not so if the we can we can get the vitamin D and also exercise so we can get the uh, two benefit from that so we the immune function is will better okay thank you very much uh, the last questions is coming from Nurul Hakimah Nurul Hakimah is from Poltekes Kemenkes Indonesia the question is how 
real food menu should be consumed during this COVID? Yeah, because like um, many, many people now doing the quarantine and also maybe okay. lockdown in some area. So the accessibility to get the real food, like the healthy food is very difficult. Sometimes like people tend to eat the instant food, something like that. But if you have like maybe like Karen, Uh, give the, our give suggestion to us because maybe we can do the urban gardening something and maybe we can like uh, try to uh, uh, grow something of plant in our home maybe we can do it but if but it is important but now I think it's easy because now everything is online even if we want to buy vegetable and fruits we can just find the online and then they can uh, deliver the uh, the vegetable and fruits to our home so it's I think it's now it's very easy uh, so it means that uh, so the real food is very important to uh, especially the healthy food and as uh, the healthy food maybe during the fasting it will different in a normal day so during the fasting we should consider about the uh, high um, high fiber so uh, we can like decrease the hungry so the because increase satiety in the long time and also we can should consider about the fluids uh, and also The important thing maybe because uh, during the quarantine is uh, people tend to stress about the COVID-19. So the food that uh, contain the melatonin and also is and tryptophan is very important. And we can uh, consume like milk and milk product uh, almost every day or maybe at dinner before sleep. So it, it can decrease the hours uh, sleep disturbance and also can decrease the uh, our stress also. Also, maybe also can lead to lower intake of the unhealthy food. Uh, so if I think you are uh, the po from politics, I think you can arrange the healthy foods, like uh, what kind of food that can consume. The important thing is that we should uh, reduce the instant food and also reduce the food that high in natrium, high in sugar, and also high in fat and also high in energy and uh, uh, avoid the comfort food. Comfort food is that uh, like a pizza or burger, burger, and also the other uh, like lasagna, something like that. Yeah, we can try the, the something is a very simple but healthy. Okay. okay, thank you very much for your time and your explanation is very clear, Dr. Esti. So yeah, we are comes to an end of this uh, seminar, a uh, webinar series. Uh, about the COVID-19 in Indonesia, Thailand, US, and the second session we discussing about the, how the nutritional recommendations and how the uh, beneficial activity that we can do in the home like urban gardening and also how we can use our free time or work from home or learn from home if you are student or higher student education. So yeah, so please wisely Uh, take your time and during this uh, pandemic COVID-19 you can also doing some uh, positive activities like urban gardening in your backyard on uh, the uh, practice uh, a lot of uh, positive activity as well so and the lastly uh, we need to keep our immune system from the eating of various of uh, different Nut nutrition from the different foods we keep to uh, uh, diversity and all the balanced nutrition nutrients from the we we from the our activity so um, thank you again for the all speakers in today's international webinar series that been held by Faculty of Health Science, University of Almaty, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And thank you for Dr. Susiwa Wichaikul, uh, Ms. Karen K. Medos, and Dr. Esti Nurwanti, and all our honorable speakers today. We would also like to give our highest appreciations to our um, committee that will prepare this kind of activity international webinar series in the COVID-19 and before closing our spinner today 
I have important information about your e-certificate to all of you, the participants. The first is please check our university website at almaata.ac.ad to check current updates. The committee will also send a notification via your email to link you with the e-certificates. So representing Faculty of Health Science, Almaata University, and also PBRI and DC and NV Thailand, and Office of Emergency Management, New York USA University of New South Wales and Kenfield College, Australia, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to all of you to have a participate in our international COVID-19 webinar series that been held by Faculty of Health Science, University of Alma-Ata, Indonesia. And thank you. See you on the next Alma-Ata University webinar series. And Bye-bye, stay home, stay active, stay positive for all of you, our participants. So, yeah, let's flatten curve. Bye-bye.